So the people who are just focused on work-life balance often miss out on work-life balance as life goes by. Hi, welcome to another episode of Bakhtari MD. Again, as you know, this season we're doing Crash CEO School where we give you all of the skills hopefully you will need to move your organization to the next level for you to become an effective leader, no matter where you are in your leadership journey. Today, you know, we want to talk about work-life balance. And normally for these podcasts, I actually prepare an outline of all the points that I want to talk about and the sequence that I want to talk about uh, so I can, you know, have a cohesive uh, argument for whatever I'm talking about. But in preparing for this um, topic, I really just kind of want to speak from the heart and not have something scripted or prepared because I think some of the points I want to make are really just concepts that don't have any structure, but it's getting an idea across. And this the idea I want to talk about is work-life balance. You know, as we all know, when we all, you know, get old and retire or when we're at the end of our journey here on Earth, very few people say, oh, I wish I had put in more hours. I wish I had, you know, spent more time at the office. So we all know that. So we, we understand that it, when you talk about work-life balance, um, there's really no balance at all. I mean, ideally, we should spend all our time uh, with our families and things that are important to us, whether it's interests we have, religion, God, whatever it is, family. But on some other way, when we the way you really have to interpret work-life balance is we can have a rewarding career or job, which gives you a lot of satisfaction. So that would be the ideal goal. But is there a way to take that, take that thing that we'd like, let's say we found the perfect career, but have it enhance our other life, our personal life, our life away from work? And sometimes that can be confusing. And I've seen people make this mistake that they're so focused on work-life balance, which for a lot of people is just a cue that I don't want to work more than 40 hours a week or or I'm only going to dial in my job and I'm just going to clock in and out and not give anything more because I'm, what's really important to me is this other thing. But, you know, I'm here today to make the argument that in many ways we can leverage the energy that we put into our career, which hopefully we're going to enjoy anyway, but to enhance your life. So let's just say you're in your 20s and you're starting out. You know, there are people who in their 20s, let's say, or 30s, take a few years out of their lives and f crush it and just work 80, 100 hours a week to get something going that later on translates into impact on their personal lives and, and stuff they can do in ways they could have never dreamt about. So let's just say you throw your all your energy, even inside of a company, to, to growing in that company or growing a business. And then decades later, you're able to uh, maybe cut back or get involved in charities or give back to the community in ways that you could have never done if you had just worked nine to five and clocked in and out. So the argument I want to make is, is that it's not clear cut that if you just get nine to five job and don't really try to get ahead because it's going to infringe on your personal life or whatever, it may actually be potentially hurting that personal life down the road, maybe in a decade, maybe in two decades, maybe in three decades. There may be things that, you know, later on, um, you can't do for your children or your family or your spouse or your community because of the resources that you have or you know maybe you're you're going to be tied to that nine to five job for the next 40 years so in terms of travel freedom time freedom if you invest in creating something for yourself whether it's inside of a company or outside of a company in many ways 
you can't rule out that that actually is the optimal thing for work-life balance. It may not be an equal equation in the first five years, 10 years, or whatever, but the rate of return may be so high later on that it impacts your work-life balance for decades to come if you're willing to have deferred gratification and work hard uh, for for a period of time and what that period is you know i'm going to leave that open-ended whether it's five years ten years uh, what i have seen though is i've seen a lot of people be so focused on work-life balance in their 20s 30s and often their 40s that when they really need work-life balance when their kids are teenagers or when they when they're you know when they're getting a little older and they really need personal time off and they really need to have resources to invest uh, on things that they're interested in, you know, maybe it's charities or maybe it's community projects or community involvement, that they're limited. Today we have a bulletproof system that helps us close up to 80% of those inbound calls. Our high converting call class will teach you how to demonstrate your authority quickly without being pushy. We believe that many businesses out there can benefit from this. We promise to help you achieve your revenue goals by converting more of your incoming calls into actual sales. For more information, please visit our website at highconvertingcallclass.com. Stop waiting for the sales to come to you. Put your revenue into your hands. The question really is, did you really get work-life balance because you clocked out at 501 sharp? And was there really a payoff? Did you really get something in return? Because in many ways, I think that's even more bleak. If, if you commit yourself to never really reaching for the stars uh, when you're younger, aren't you in some ways committing to always working, you know, nine to five for the rest of your life? Because unless you hit the lotto or s something happens and somehow you get a lot of resources or capital by some other means by not taking that risk up front where you sacrifice work-life balance you're committed to almost having mediocre work-life balance for the rest of your life and i think that's an equation that people often don't think about until it's too late because Let's say you are, hey, I'm the clock in and clock out king in my 20s and 30s and maybe 40s. Well, what happens when in your mid 40s or whatever, you now need flexibility. You now need time off. Now you need to create your own schedule. Maybe the opportunity will be there, but you just spend two, three decades passing up on potential opportunities. So... The people who are just focused on work-life balance often miss out on work-life balance as life goes by, if that makes any sense. And I get it. There's no guarantees. There's no guarantees that, you know, uh, if you kill yourself for five years or three years or two years, that that's going to translate into a time where you will truly have work-life balance, right? So what I actually translate work-life balance especially in midlife or later in life, is whether you have time freedom, whether, um, you know, if, if a family member needs you for a month or two to help them or do something, can you get away? Can you do it? Can you be there for other people, friends, families, things that are important in your life? As you get older, can you break away or are you locked in because you opted just to, you know, work nine to five and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with working 95, but literally clocking in and clocking out, sort of sleepwalking through your career just to do enough work to get the paycheck. Because at the end of the day, if your strategy is just to do enough to keep your boss off your back and get the paycheck, not many of those people get put in positions that they will have work-life balance later on, right? So if, you're, if your boss or whoever senses that you're doing just the bare minimum, staying in your lane and doing the bare minimum to keep him or her off your back, right? And just to get a, you know, a good review, but nothing that sets the, the company or their organization on fire, 
damn, you, often those people are not the first person thought of when a massive new opportunity presents itself in the company, right? Oh, we need, we're creating a whole new department, a whole new division. You know, uh, let's scratch our heads. Who, 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 can we, who can we peg for this role? We need someone that will, you know, start this department and, and light it on fire. Well, they're not going to be thinking of, of the guy or girl who is clocking in and staying in their lane and doing just enough to get by. So the argument I'd like to make on, on this and something just uh, just some fodder for, for people to think about is if you really want work-life balance, someone could make the argument that to get true work-life balance through the span of your life, it may be necessary to have periods where you don't have work-life balance as we traditionally define it. I'm just putting that out there. I know that's not for everybody. Uh, it's just one way of looking at it. But I want people who haven't thought of it that way to realize that in having true work-life balance may require you not to have work-life balance at some level for some periods in order to get there. So whether you want to call it deferred gratification, whatever you want to call it, uh, I, especially young people, I want them to know that th that is not the for sure way just to uh, insist. Uh, one of the more interesting things uh, you know, that I often see on interviews when I ask people like what's important to you, you know, and they bring up work-life balance. I can tell you uh, as someone who's always looking for the next leader, the next person to take over a company and have, no, have unlimited upside professionally and financially, uh, often I think work-life balance in an interview is a euphemism for some people that I'm not here to light this company on fire. Uh, I'll do a good job. I'll do a great job, but I'm not here to change the world. I'm not here to change your stock price. I'm not here to quadruple your business. I'm here to get a job done, which by the way is needed. And you know, many companies simply need just that. They need someone to literally do that. But, but you have to understand those positions then on some level are going to limit your upside professionally and financially. Okay, so I think that gets the concept across. Please, I'd be really interested in your comments. Uh, I, I, more than anyone else, believe in work-life balance, the importance of family, uh, community, and what have you. So I'm in that court. I'm just arguing what's the best way to get there. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.